hi everyone for today's video and i think this is my last video for my brush series for the entire month of september and i only found it fitting that i'm going to review this set of brushes that i have um the main reason why is because um one of my friends uh, watched one of my videos and uh, he quickly messaged me and said what's that brush that you're using that looks like a toothbrush and he was very intrigued by it and it actually was an artiste brush. Now, um, I have decided that I would like to talk about this for a teeny tiny bit and I'm gonna give you my honest reviews and my opinion about this brush, which I have used um, on and off for the past four years. So I have here with me a set of five makeup brushes from Artiste and I actually got this in 2016 and they were a gift. And prior to that, I have only seen them pop up in a few videos of um, Lisa Eldridge. And ever since I've seen them, I was dying to try them because as you can see they're very very revolutionary in design and it's also quite pretty i have to say now um i couldn't get this here in the philippines because it was largely unavailable and i wasn't so sure if they will ship it here so when i got this i was very very excited to try it because i have been wanting to try this for a long long time so my artiste brushette came with an oval six an oval four an oval three a circle one and a linear one so prior to filming i actually checked out the artist website to see if there's any update uh, regarding the brushes and indeed there was um right now because what i have here is the oval six what they're selling right now um in their five piece brush set is actually the oval seven so which i believe it's a much more bigger brush because when i started using this set i said that oh, i think the oval six is just too small to apply foundation so because of that, um, I actually use this more for applying um, creams and highlighters or even contouring sometimes. Because they changed the oval 6 to an oval 7, so the brush set now actually um, is more expensive at $175. Wherein back in 2016, this would cost only around $165. So um, you still get good value for your money because individually they will cost a lot much more. Now, one thing I have to say about these brushes is that I really thought I was going to use them extensively throughout my career, but I really tried to love them, but I don't really reach out for them all the time. Now, the main issue that I have with these brushes is actually how you hold it on the palm of your hand. Um, the design is much more efficient when you're using it on yourself, but when I am using it on someone, I find that I have difficulty with it, mainly because it places my wrist or my hand at a certain kind of tension that I don't like, especially when I'm applying it on the face. Um, I don't find it comfortable. Um, but other than that, when I am using this on myself, um, I find this very, very comfortable. So um, I think that's the main reason why I don't use this a lot for work. So it's much more effective to be used on yourself, you know, just like a toothbrush, which this has been um, mistaken to be once <laughs> for work. But yes, anyway, so this is much more better to be used on, um, on yourself than on somebody else. And it's because of that realization that I'm not really comfortable when I'm using this to apply makeup. Um, I was initially planning to buy a much more bigger brush, but I stopped myself from doing that because I knew um, right then and then that um, I wouldn't be using that brush as much as I would use my other brushes. Over the years, what I've realized is that when I am using um, this brush to apply foundation, it's much more better for me to deliver the foundation first on my skin and to use the brush to spread it. Now this is a synthetic fiber brush, so this will work on liquids, creams, um, even for skincare. So it's a very, very versatile brush and I do like using it, um, especially on myself, but very rarely will I use this um, for work. Now when I'm using this for work, I would actually use this to um, retouch um, with powders um, mainly because it would be much more easier to clean right after. I make sure that when I am applying product um, on my face with this or on like on the person I'm working with, um, I do not load the foundation on the brush because I find that this will charge the brush too much and also because sometimes when you use too much product it actually clumps up the fiber of the brushes and it will take more time to blend the product further now one other thing that i have to say also is that i do not use this on people who have texturized skin because i have 
um, realize that this is, um, although it's possible, but when you try to um, use this in a stippling motion, you can actually feel some sharpness uh, on the bristles and it's quite uncomfortable. So it is best to use this um, brush as instructed, which is like to use it in circular motion. Now the amazing thing about this brush is that you can actually blend out um, the product fairly easily. It's a no-brainer. Make sure that you do it in circular motions just so that you avoid um, streaking. If only I had a bigger brush head, um, this would be a much more faster process of blending everything out. Now for applying concealer, I use the same. I load the product first on the area where I want to conceal. The other thing with Artie's brushes is that you have to be very, very light-handed with your usage of this because if you add too much pressure, um, you would tend to pull on your skin. Now, as we all know, um, if we tend to pull too much on our skin, it breaks down the elastine and the collagen on our skin. So that's a no-no. So just make sure that you use very, very light um, strokes with very, very light pressure. Now, the great thing about um, this product is it actually is a very, very versatile um, brush. You can use it any way that you want and you can use it interchangeably. So like, for example, I am using the foundation brush that I used earlier for blush application. And let's spread and try to blend everything. So it's very fairly easy to use this brush. It's very, very instinctive. I mean, you can't go wrong. Now the thing is for covering blemishes and concealers, um, I am not comfortable using the Artiste brush, although um, it's very, very versatile. You can use it in any way that you want to. Um, for example, um, this brush, you can use it for um, lipstick or even for concealers or even for putting on camouflage. But I just find that the bristles are just too big for such a thing because I prefer to conceal at um, a much more precise way. So I tend to not use this for that. Also, I don't like to use this when I'm applying lipstick on someone because instinctively it's just not comfortable with my hand, you know, it, I mean with my hand movements. Even for myself, like I don't use this to apply uh, lipstick because um, it's just a different form of um, gripping the brush head. So I would prefer to use a regular brush for this because um, it's just instinctively correct to me um, to use it this way. Also one other thing uh, with this brush, um, when I got this out of the packaging, it was actually dented here at the corner. After researching and going to the artist's website before, they said that all you have to do was to steam um, the bristles and the bristle will go back to its shape. And um, after doing that, I did steam it and the bristles did go back to its shape. So of all the brushes that I have, this is actually the least brush that I use. Now the brushes that I tend to go back to um, in this 5P set is either of these two brushes. Now I'm going to talk about this later and I'm going to talk about this first. Now um, this is the Oval 3, am I correct? So yes, this is the Oval 3 and I actually use this when I want to apply um, eyeshadows. Now again, you can use this for concealers and things like that or even for like contouring if you want to apply like liquid or powder contouring this would be so great or even like for here on the cheekbones so for example um what do i have here so this is the nars ignite palette and i have realized that if i use a regular squirrel brush to pick up any of these shimmer um, eyeshadow colors it doesn't do the job so for example let's try this um color so i have here a squirrel brush so with minimum pressure so I have it loaded here and let's try to see so if I'm going to apply it here as you can see it can be very very um, spotty and it can be very very texturized and it doesn't really pick up the correct amount of color so when you try to apply this on the eyelid it really doesn't work now I have here a sable brush a much more bigger brush and then if I press it again, it becomes very, very chunky and it just doesn't deliver um, the color that I want. And if we're going to put that side by side here to see, it's not the color that is on the pan. But I have realized that if I use 
the artist's oval fee for this. If we just watch that, it's actually the color that you see on the pan. So, so can you just see the difference between on the three brushes that I used earlier? So this is a regular squirrel brush, this is a sable mix brush, and this is the RTS uh, oval fee. So let's try applying that on my eyelid. Now, as you can see here, that yeah, like it's doing the job of actually transferring the color well onto the eyelid. But the thing is, it's a little bit difficult when you want to be precise about your eyeshadow application. And if you want to create like, you know, a cat eye look or like some other dramatic look, you will have trouble um, creating looks like that. But if you're using eyeshadows and using like one wash of color, for it then this brush will work so as you can see here like you see some um, spots so I would tend to go back and use like a regular um, design brush the traditional brushes and I would use that just to fill in the gaps just to connect everything that's the main problem that I have um, noticed with the artist brush it's because it's very very dense um, it you have I have trouble trying to bring it into my socket line and i have trouble blending the colors properly so i would have to go back and use a traditional eyeshadow brush to blend things out further okay so now i'm going to be talking about the linear one so um i actually like using this for eyebrow products of course like um if you watch my um eyeliner 101 video um, this will be also great to use for eyeliner because it's actually flat and you can actually use this to line your upper lash line with eyeliner and you can also use it to add a dramatic flare. But just for today's video, I would like to show you guys what I would prefer to use it for. And I actually prefer to use it um, for the brows because it's very, very um, easy to handle and you can actually use it if you want to create a much more dramatic brow look because you can't go wrong with it. So it's very, very easy to use. It's really a no-brainer. It really helps you to create a much more um, precise eyebrow look. And you can even go in between your um, eyebrow hairs because it also helps to separate them as you apply the pigment. How great is that? But one thing you have to make sure is that you have to be very light-handed with picking up products with this because as we all know, synthetic fibers tend to pick up more product than natural hair fiber uh, makeup brushes. The one thing I have to say though, like um, it takes a certain type of skill um, to use the artiste brushes, um, especially when you're using them for your eyes because it's a different kind of application process and you know practice um, makes perfect and I really think that they are good brushes um, especially for personal use but for professional use if you're um, using this on someone else it proves to be a little bit difficult for me anyway so um, if you're a professional makeup artist and you're watching this video and um, please let me know um, what are your opinions about um, the RT's brushes and in terms of price I have to say that these brushes are quite expensive. For example, the Oval 6 is $60. And frankly, I would rather buy a natural bristled hair goat brush for that price point than something like this. And although they say that the technology is amazing, like the handles are made of a certain kind of um, material that is used in creating engines for luxury cars. Um, but I do have to say that eventually everything just starts to chip especially um, as you continue to use them over the years. Now, the other thing that also I don't like about the Artiste brushes is that they are very, very difficult to store and keep um, in my makeup kit. So I actually don't store this in a brush belt or in a brush bag um, because when I fold the brush belt, um, it will crush uh, the brush head. So I don't want to deform that in any way. So I end up actually laying them on a specific compartment in my makeup kit. And that actually takes up more space. And you know, with me and space, I would actually prefer to um, make good use of my space in my makeup kit. And these brushes are just taking up too much. 
Um, the other thing also is that um, I need some protective case for this. Um, I know that artists sell something that covers the brush head, but um, I would prefer if it would be something like, you know, what you use to cover um, toothbrushes when you're traveling. Um, I would like to see something similar to that because I would feel much more um, secure in knowing that my brushes are still going to be in good condition because there's actually something solid. Um, covering the brush head. Now I do like you know I do hope that they can create uh, traditional designed makeup brushes with this type of fiber that they use on the brush heads because I think it's very very good but I just think that you know for us makeup artists I think like if they can just put that on a brush like this it would be very great to use especially if you want to create any details or to add any specific colors at a specific part of the eye or the face because they're just too big. Now, now, I have to say that the Artiste brush is actually a great brush. And if you're in the market for synthetic fiber, and if you're thinking of going full synthetic of, instead of natural hair makeup brushes, then this is a great brand to check out. Now, now in terms for cleaning these brushes, I know that Artiste comes with their own um, brush cleaning system, which I think is a big um, marketing thing again because... I don't need to buy a different kind of cleaning system in order to clean the brushes because you know it, that's just too expensive and um, for me anyway I just clean this the regular way that I clean my brushes I use a brush I use a um, brush pad for this I still use a dishwashing liquid for this just to remove all the product from the brush head and you know it's fairly easy but the thing that I have to say is because the brush heads are so dense and especially if you load the product straight into the brush, you will tend to get a lot of product in between the bristles. So it takes more time to clean this brush than a traditional brush. But just to take note of that, and a brush pad will really, really help. So that's it for me today. I hope that this video was helpful and insightful. Um, if you have any more questions about the Artiste brush, my experience with them, um, please let me know down in the comments box below. And if you have any more um, experiences with the Artiste brush that you'd like to share with me, please let me know as well. And let's have a conversation about this. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you're having a good day wherever you are. Bye-bye.